All right, brothers and sisters, today is another bright new day that the Lord has made. And uh, we're going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And uh, today's Bible lesson, we're going to answer this very baffling question among Christians. And uh, this question is... uh, I may frame it like this. What is the significance of Jesus being anointed by a woman with expensive perfume? Why did this woman have to waste this very expensive perfume? And Jesus didn't say anything. He just said, let her do whatever she has to do. So what's the significance? I hope uh, you're ready for today's lesson. So, let's get started. Now, there's something to understand that all four Gospels present an account of Jesus being anointed by a woman with a very costly jar of perfume. In Matthew 26, verse 6 to 13, Mark 14, 3 to 9, Luke 7, 36 to 50, John 20, uh, 12, from verse 1 to 8, uh, And Matthew and Mark relate the same event, but uh, do not give the woman's name. Hmm. And Luke tells of a different woman, also anonymous. And on an earlier occasion, and yet in another event, the woman in John is identified as Mary of Bethany, sister to Martha and Lazarus. Let's let's read uh, John 11 verse 2. It says... It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Huh, now we get it. So to understand the significance of Jesus being anointed on these three occasions, we look at each account separately and compare and contrast them in conclusion. The anointing of Jesus in Matthew takes place two days before Passover in the town of Bethany at Simon the leper's home. The Bible tells us in uh, Matthew 26 verse 6 to 7, it it, it tells us, Now when Jesus was was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment and she poured it on the head on his head as he reclined at a table. Okay, let's continue. Matthew focuses on the anointing of Jesus as a teaching episode for the disciples who react with anger because of the woman's wasteful extravagance. But Jesus defends her and says, she's done a beautiful thing to me, Matthew 26, 10. And Christ explains that the anointing is to prepare his body for burial and the woman acts, act of love will forever be remembered whenever the good news is preached. The same, the, the same thing Mark, Mark also explains. He tells the same story in a similar term with an anonymous woman with an alabaster box interrupting a meal in Simon the leper's home to anoint the head of Jesus with expensive perfume? Again, the woman, the woman's critics describe her as, a, uh, as someone who is wasteful and her gift as ex- excessive, complaining that it could have been sold for more than a year's wages. Look at Mark chapter 14 verse 5. <laughs> Look at them what they are saying. For it might be it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and and uh, have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. But what did Jesus say? <laughs> we see Jesus receives the woman, uh, the, her gift, as a selfless act of love and devotion, an appropriate way to honor the Messiah. Jesus reveals that he will not be with them much longer, which references to his impending death and burial. And both Matthew and Mark, they both account uh, on this. 
and they emphasize the prophetic significance of the anointing of Jesus, alluding to his death and burial. All right? Also that there may be an implication of Jesus' kingship, since in the Old Testament, the anointing of, of the head was often associated with dedication of kings. This, this was a common thing. Think about some uh, in the book of First Samuel uh, nine fifteen, and also ten, verse one, also sixteen, verse twelve to thirteen. First Kings also one, thirty eight to forty. They all speak about anointing, anointing of a king. That one gives you a clear picture, right? So something we have to understand that in Luke's account of a similar yet different instance, Jesus uses the occasion of being anointed to tell a parable about forgiveness. Okay? Jesus told a parable about forgiveness. Go and read uh, Luke 7, 39 to 50. Okay? It explained the, uh, um, concerning this um, This, this whole story that Jesus gave about forgiveness. I, I don't have time to go there, but just, just go and read it. And uh, we understand that about a year before his death, Jesus was dining in the home of Simon the Pharisee, who had arrogantly neglected to extend the customary respect and hospitality to his guest, while a sinful woman anoints Jesus' feet, lavishing her love and gratefulness upon Jesus. And in John's gospel, Lazarus' sister, Mary, is the woman who anoints Jesus with a high-priced perfume at a dinner in Bethany. And the story is similar to those in the other gospels. Although this anointing takes place six days before Passover, and Judas is named as the disciple who objects to the waste. <laughs> On this occasion, the Bible tells us that... Uh, in uh, John 12 verse 3, Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. Think about that kind of love. And Jesus defends Mary from Judah's criticism by pointing out the unique opportunity Mary had. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Jesus knew that he's, he's about to leave. John 12 verse 8. So this was a way of preparing him or showing the people the picture that Jesus is about to go and be crucified. Because many were not even seeing this. And uh, we see Mary anointing. This Mary's anointing again points to Christ's identity as the Messiah King. But it also po points to his humble position as the servant king. When Mary anoints Jesus' feet and then wipes them with her hair, she foreshadows Jesus' actions at the upcoming uh, Last Supper when the Lord washes the disciples' feet and teaches them how to love one another through sacrificial, humble service. This is spoken in the book of John 13 from verse 1 to 20. And in each account, a woman pours out a precious and costly perfume in an extravagant act of worship. And these three women who anointed Jesus, Jesus recognized them, all right, and unequaled value of what they have done to him, all right. It's like they were expressing their gratitude with and reserved love and devotion to Jesus Christ. Two anointings of Jesus happened during the week of Passover and are linked with his imminent death and burial. The early anointing in Luke's account in the middle of Jesus' ministry in Galilee and draws a different lesson on forgiveness and love. And in each case, the woman's actions signal more than she knows. But... Uh, 
although she may be not or she may not have really comprehended the messianic significance of our anointing each woman each of these women had come to an, to appreciate Christ's worth more than anyone else at the table and Jesus Christ is God anointed messiah the word messiah means the anointed one and derives directly from the hebrew word for anointed Christ comes from the Greek word Christos also meaning anointed one thus Christ is the Greek equivalent to Messiah and when Jesus received the holy spirit at his baptism he is anointed by God in preparation for his life or his life's work that I may say in Luke 3:22 you can also read Acts 10:38, Luke 4:18. So, having had that, we have to understand that on these three separate occasions, Jesus is anointed with fragrant ointment in his work as the savior, the king of heaven who was in preparation to die to save mankind, to save his people, to save you. and to save me and that's the end of today's bible lesson up to see you in the next one